Good morning. Good morning, buddy. Happy Friday to you. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the luminescence. Um, did this yesterday. Hello, Nancy. Nancy is always sunny in San Diego. It's a beautiful place. Hello, Diane from Ontario. I'm glad it sounds great today. Thank you for being so patient. It was horrible yesterday. Could not get that sound right. Hello, Claudia. Good morning. Ciao, Giovanni. Hello, Susie. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Alice from Arkansas. So the one thing I noticed before I set up a room downstairs, back at work finally, which is really nice, it's nice to be back at work, um, is this machine is really good at uh, focusing on whatever it sees. So sometimes when I move my hand, it goes in and out. So I will figure a way around that. Hello, Letiza. Good morning. So, hello, everybody. Let me go ahead and put this down. So, this is what we did yesterday. Just wanted to show you really quickly. We'll be doing again this. We'll do this again today. Hello, Sharon from Kentucky. So, these are both uh, mixtures of, for the most part, iridescent and duochromes. Um, I did put two extra interference in today. So today we'll do 25. Yesterday we did 20. Hello, Jeff from the Netherlands. I, I, I love the Netherlands. So there's, this is how it's going to look dry. Let me put this up. So, and then we're going to do it all over again. So this is from yesterday. I'll try to go slow. If I go fast, it tries to auto focus, which is kind of a nice feature, but So Giovanni uses the iridescence, and Claudia, who's on right now, um, uses them in many ways. Uh, if you haven't gone to their sites, it'd be good to go to their sites. And so next week I'm going to, hello Tarun, next week I'm going to start inviting um, uh, artists to join me on a drop-in basis. I think that'll be, that'll be good. Okay, so with that, Let's go ahead and let's do some paint outs. I'm doing good. It's, uh, it's good here in Washington. Um, I just so look forward to being able to travel and see people again. Can't wait to do that. Tarun, see you in India. Um, meet friends in Germany and all over the world. Really missing that. So Anne says she loves the luminescent iridescent colors. Awesome. So the luminescent the luminescent colors are the luminescence uh, there we go are made up of four different um, hello recline they're made up of pearlescent of which we have two. We have pearlescent and pearlescent shimmer. They're made up of duochromes. 
and the duochromes, we have 19. They're made up of the iridescent and the iridescent we have 20. And lastly, they're made up of the interference, of which we have seven. So it's, it's one name that consists of one, two, three, four different pieces of the family. And kind of the way this works, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do some paint outs is the iridescent these all either have mica or a silica and they're made kind of in a sandwich fashion so it's really complicated um, chemistry to produce these particular pigments mainly used in the automobile industry so they're absolutely perfect High, high light fastness, um, they can take salts, acids, they're just super strong pigments. So with the iridescent, when light wave comes in, it hits this mica particle and it bounces out. This is called reflection. On the interference, the light wave comes in, comes out, but it goes down, it goes this way, and this is called refraction, refraction, or scattering, scattering light everywhere. And that's how come on iridescent, you can see it both over um, a dark and you can see it over a light. Whereas this refraction of the interference, you can see it very well over the dark. And it's very, very, very light over the white because it's just scattering that light all over the place. On the duochrome, you have both things happening. You have the light wave comes in and it can encounter the mica particle and it can go out. So that would be reflection. You can have the light wave come in and bounce in many different ways and that would be refraction. So the duochromes can have both reflection and refraction. The neat thing about the duochromes is it's one pigment that really shifts between two different colors. So very interesting. That right there is just my camera trying to auto adjust to see. There we go. I will see how I can turn that off, but that's just that's just auto focus going amok. Okay, so that's luminescent. Yeah, if you ever have questions, please leave the questions. I, I love getting your questions. They're always very, very good questions. Um, but that's just kind of the, the general way in which, in which the luminescent series works. So now we can play with them. One thing you would, you would, you would probably um, uh, think about really quite quickly is on the C-Lab. For brightness, which is the L value, L values for brightness, um, this is the brightest, this is the darkest. You know all these are going to be way up here, way, way, way at the top. They're going to be very bright. Maybe, let's see. I'll do that. I'll try that, Jeff. And just bring this on my bring this up here on my paper a little bit more like that. Yeah. Okay, so now let's play with some, some of the colors. I'm not going to do that. 
I'm gonna go downstairs and start setting up the other room. Maybe bring this down a little bit too, like that. There we go. I watch some of you in your studios and boy, you just have it perfect. Okay, we'll try that. Okay, so the first five are gonna be, let me bring this out here so you can see it. We're going to do the duochrome green pearl. We're going to do the iridescent electric blue. It's a very, very, very popular color. It's probably one of the most popular. Duochrome adobe. Duochrome Arctic Fire. And Duochrome Violet Fantasy. These names are really kind of cool. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like. So that's what they look like starting out with. So now we'll wet them out. Oh, I think so. I'll, uh, that's good. That's good, Eve. I will see how I can disable it. I've, I've So this is going to be the green pearl. This is going to be the electric blue. Electric blue, again, is probably one of the most popular colors. Um, Giovanni or possibly Claudia, who does these a lot since they're online, can maybe say what they use it for. This is the Duochrome Adobe. From the tube, these wet out really, really, hello Besnick, they wet out really super easy. If you let them dry, like on a, um, a dot card or uh, your palette, you're going to have to put some water to wake them up <coughs> because the mica has them pack. Um, it's like shingles on a roof. They can pack pretty tight. This is Arctic Fire. looks like. So you kind of see this is the um, Violet Fantasy. And they're just full of mica. Oh, there we go. Full of mica. So I've seen many things done with them. Um, Claudia uses them for um, 
eyes. She has beautiful, beautiful um, eyes with them. And I've seen uh, definitely fanciful stuff such as uh, dragons, ladybugs, hummingbirds, dragonflies. Um, I've seen people use it for inside the inside the pupil to make the eye look like it's alive, which is pretty interesting. But I'm going to invite artists on, and that way you can ask the artist directly, which I think will be really helpful especially when it comes to the iridescence, the primatex. Um, there we go. <coughs> so I'm going to put that one to the side. I'm going to staple what this is so we can look at it in a minute. Hello, Angela. Hello, Daniela. First, we're going to go over here. So we're going to test uh, interference green. So this is an interference. Iridescent topaz. Duochrome autumn, autumn Mystery. This one is Iridescent Scarab. I think I like the name of that one. That's kind of cool. And this one's Interference Blue. We did Iridescent Blue. This is Interference Blue. Oh. So this will be Interference Blue. Maybe I'll just like, so I'll put them both to. Uh, beside each other here. Okay. So the first one is going to be interference green. Interference green. Next one is going to be iridescent, iridescent topaz, iridescent topaz. Next one is duochrome autumn mystery, duochrome autumn mystery. This is the iridescent scarab, iridescent scarab red. That's kind of cool. And lastly, the interference blue. I think beside the 
beside the interference blue, I'm going to put some of the iridescent blue next to it, just so we can see the difference. for a second. So this right here is the iridescent electric blue. And then over here, you can hardly see it, this is the interference electric blue. So on white, you can see, very difficult to see an interference. Very easy to see an iridescent. Hello, Misha. I think while that is drawing a little bit so we can see the difference between these two, um, I did want to show you the water. So there were some things mentioned yesterday. You can see all the mica in that water, which is probably have a separate water and a separate brush. The brush will clean out. So if you didn't have a separate brush, it's not like you really need one. If you do, it's easier. You can always clean your brush in fresh water and that micro will come out. It will come out. So let me show that to you. So this is in fresh water. I'm just going to put one here, one here, just fresh water. Now I'm going to put it out of this water I've been using to rinse the iridescence and interference and duochromes with. And we'll leave that for a couple of minutes and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, put it over here. Alright, so this is our interference green. Next to it is the iridescent topaz. This right here is the duochrome autumn mystery. This is the iridescent scarab red right here. And then this is the interference blue right here, interference blue. And this is the iridescent blue. So what's really interesting is while this one's transparent on white, it really is a kind of a go-getter when it's on a dark. Iridescent, you can see that over white and over dark. It's a really very, very pretty color. But the iridescent actually is, in my eyes here and on the screen, it is brighter. It would have a higher L value. Kind of neat. Hello, Marie. So Rosemary says, I've just started to dabble with these such fun. They add subtle highlights when used on white paper. Okay, so let's look at these. And if you wanted to know, um, this black paper is Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Black, and it's a 140 pound cold press. Okay? If you're interested. And there's bigger sheets available too. Probably everybody, many people sell it in different places. There might be other brands that have it. Um, I just happened to pick this one up. As 
as I do this, sometimes it spills out on my clothes and being that they're dark, I have sparkly dots on my clothes for until I, until I wash them. Can you believe it's, it's already June? It's amazing. So we're going to look at iridescent blue silver, we're going to look at iridescent blue silver, iridescent sunstone, duochrome desert bronze, duochrome emerald, and duochrome violet pearl. Okay, so those are our next sets. Then I'll show you what these look like in the palette. So this first one is going to be the iridescent blue silver. Next one is the iridescent iridescent sunstone. screen you can see it's it looks kind of green but then we flip it up it's going to definitely be bronze as well so we'll let that dry this one is duochrome emerald duochrome emerald Yeah, the blues are very interesting, and they're 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 very popular. And the last one is going to be the duochrome, duochrome violet. Let that dry for a couple of seconds. doing that. So let me sh I'll just quickly show you what they look like in the pan. There's our iridescent blue silver, our iridescent sunstone. This is the duochrome desert bronze, duochrome emerald, and this is the duochrome violet pearl. So 
the more they dry, the more they're going to pop. In general, uh, interferences are going to be much more um, they're not going to be as, as dark as a iridescent that's put over white and sometimes you may want that you may want it to be that you know a subtle feature thing is because they're all luminescent they're all going to have either a mica or for the most part mica some uh, a, a silica um, I don't have to clean it as much as if I was using another color a queen burnt orange or a pyrrole etc because I don't want that that mica in those paints so there we go that's getting darker it'll get darker as it dries the thing about watercolor is you can really see the pigment so there we go. We really start seeing it. The more it dries, the more that pigment we're going to see. Okay. So let me put that over here for a second. Yeah. Let me see if this is drying. Okay, so this is this is kind of dried, but you can see right here, this is where I put the I had the brush. Um, I was using it for the iridescent, the luminescent colors. Cleaned it out in water, and you can see there's no sparkle in the water. Right, so it just took me rinsing out the brushes to get rid of the mica, except that what's on my hands, I'm gonna touch this. And here is where it was just using the water that had the mica in it. And so, I mean, if it doesn't, you will transfer it if you don't wash your brush out. But it's easy to get rid of. Let me see that. But you can see all the particles in the from this water. All right. So just want to kind of clean your brush, and you can see you rinse your brush off, and you'll get rid of it. I get questions every once in a while. I see sparkles in my um, X, Y, or Z. And so, well, if you use a, lum a luminescent. Um, that could happen. Yes, all the products that we either make or we buy are ethically sourced. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next five. The luminescent come from very, very, very big players, so um, following pedigrees is actually very easy. Okay, this is going to be the um, Duochrome Cabo Blue. I probably should have cleaned that off from yesterday. So, Duochrome Cabo Blue. Duochrome Oceanic. In fact, let me do that. Let me put this up here so you see it. Now, oh, guys, I'm doing this. You can see it. There we go. Um, da -da -da, da -da -da. This is iridescent. Goldstone. So you might ask, why is there so many golds or bronzes? And that's because it's what the car industry, the people that really use these, um, use on cars. And, and really kind of what that boils down to is because what we as consumers really like. My car, which is has 
black paint has a very um, a very light pearlescent that you can see really easy in the um, in the sunshine, but not so easy when it's dark. And then I've had other cars that had really big flakes, and that was be almost like a pearlescent shimmer, um, just because it's a larger particle size. Okay, so we have the cobble blue. Let me move this over here. Here we go. So cobble blue. Thank you for your recommendations. I mean, putting the names, um, I hope that helps. That was a great recommendation. I will see about how I turn off the motion of that camera. This is a uh, Duochrome Oceanic. Duochrome Oceanic. This is going to be iridescent goldstone. Iridescent goldstone. They are pretty in this palette. Iridescent. So the duochromes are going to shift to one pigment that can shift to two colors, depending on the angle of the viewer. This is iridescent sapphire. Iridescent sapphire. Iridescent sapphire, and this is going to be iridescent moonstone. Iridescent moonstone. There we go. The sparkle in the red and the green fuchsia is mica. Those two um, minerals are just absolutely loaded with mica. They're mica on steroids. So that is red fuchsia. Do you think it has some mica inside of it? What do you think? And then the other one you had mentioned. What do you think? You think green fuchsia has some, some mica inside of it? It's just loaded. Yeah, they're just, um, some of the minerals have mica to a lesser degree. Um, these are just massively loaded with mica. to the it just easily just comes out so it just went all over this paper yeah come on focus there we go so great question and let me do this real quick because we're doing really good on time let me uh, we have iridescent gold stone, iridescent sapphire, iridescent moonstone. Those are these three right here. Just kind of want to show you what they look. This is a, a 140 pound cold press paper right here. I just want to kind of show you. that you can see them over a white paper. You can see them being the iridescent. You can see over the white paper, the duochrome would be the same way. Interference would be much, much lighter, almost um, just really super light. So let me show you the sapphire. So if I did this with an iridescent, it would look like it would be like right here. 
you could just it just be almost transparent. And let me show you the the moonstone. And that's the moonstone. So very different over white than over the dark. However, if I can get the camera to show you, as this dries, you'll really see these. They'll really sparkle, even on white. Okay, so even on white. The interference, I think I might have one interference in this last batch, and we'll do that right here. You'll see it's, very, it's much more difficult to see. Yeah, you know, the mica in nature is quite beautiful. The fuchsites um, are very, very beautiful. The ones, these are, so these luminescent families, the pearlescent, the iridescent, the interference, and the duochrome are synthetic. Um, these are made in the laboratory, and that's because they're made for, the, for use in the car industry and industry in general. So they're absolutely perfect. And the amount of, I was reading one time, there's, there's just, an enormous amount of steps of how to locate that, how they locate that mica to get the refraction or the reflection. Just kind of beautiful in its complexity, but but very complex. So it's neat to be able to piggyback onto the automobile industry. Um, some of the machinery that we use in the on the manufacturing floor comes from the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, Tubing machines, uh, other machines are from the from the pharmaceutical, and it's, it's great that as a small company we can piggyback onto onto companies that have created either great pigment or great machines to be able to bring that to artists. It's, it's pretty incredible. I mean, some of these companies, BASF, uh, ADM, a lot that make pigments have just hundreds, if not thousands of people involved in chemistry and what all other things to create the pigments they use in industry in the car industry, which is pretty phenomenal to tap into. Okay. Let's, let's do the do the last five. Rosemary says, I use these on waterfalls and some skyscapes. When they touch darker paints, they increase the intensity, giving lovely effects. That's great. Um, so um, Misha says, are duochromes kind of chameleon auto paints equivalent? Um, they're really quite interesting to see on cars. You know, when you when you go, I'm sure you've gone and, and passed a car, seen a car in a parking lot. When you look at it from one angle, you go, oh, that's really, um, that's a beautiful, say, green. And then you, you walk past it. So you're now viewing it from a different angle and you go, wait a minute, that's not green, that that's blue. That's a duochrome. Um, the iridescence pretty much will stay with one one color as perceived by the viewer, the duochromes actually change to up to two colors depending on the angle or the or the perception of the viewer. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I guess they are chameleon. Let's see, do we have an iridescent? We have an interference. Okay, so we'll do these next. And I'm going to grab a. I'm going to grab an interference because I want to show you an interference. So these are going to be. These last five are going to be the duochrome tropic sunrise, the iridescent antique copper. That's going to be pretty. Iridescent garnet, duochrome turquoise, and iridescent Aztec gold. And I'm going to. show you an interference over white. So let me grab an interference. Okay. 
and I'm going to show you an interference gold because I'm going to show you that over white. Okay, so here we go. Which has the strongest glow? Hello, Allison. Um, so, Mickey's art. What do you mean by strongest glow? Because I want to be able to answer that question. going to be pretty high on the L value, which is the, the, the light value. And you kind of expect that because they're going to just either reflect or refract light so well. That little, those little micas are like a bazillion little mirrors. Oh, that's a good question. Mickey, they're, 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 they are so, the L value on them as a group is so very close. They're so very high. They're really very high um, in the light value. So that, that would be difficult. Um, what I'll do is I will go into the C lab that I put on to online, but it won't be either um, next week and I will, I'll just show you those. Many of them are going to be just equal to each other. They're going to have very high L values. They're probably going to be, you know, 96, 97, 98, even higher than that. Um, but what I'll do is I will go ahead and I will graph those and, and show you that next week. But they're going to be super high. I mean, they're going to be really, really, really high. Good question. Okay, this first one is going to be Duochrome Tropic Sunrise. Ooh, you see that? Duochrome Tropic Sunrise. Iridescent antique copper. Yeah, we have this this much uh, mica. They're going to be really bright. This is iridescent garnet. Duochrome turquoise. This is pretty. This is going to be iridescent Aztec gold. So one thing, Mickey, and this is going to be the interference interference gold. You can already kind of, already kind of see the interference gold is, is very. It's going to be very bright on the dark, um, sometimes darker than the iridescent or the duochromes. Because we're going to do the C lab on, for example, um, we're doing on watercolor paper. When we hit that with the photospectrophotometer, because so much of that white is going to come back, 
they're all going to be the ir the interference are all going to be very very high because you you see more of the white paper with the interference. Um, if you use an iridescent again, which are going to be very bright, you'll see. Let me show you. This is a really good question, and and it's different with a machine, of course, versus the human eye. It's it's just way different. So the human eye may not. I'll show you here what I mean. Okay. And I'll try some of these other colors too. So if we look at this one right here, this is interference, right? And kind of when we think about interference, we know it's going to scatter light. So you're not going to see it um, as heavily as you will in iridescent. This is an iridescent. Um, this is an iridescent and this is a duochrome. So the duochromes, duochromes and iridescents, you're going to see much more over, over a white paper than um, an interference. The interesting thing is when we present this, when we present this, which is right here, okay, this is uh, interference gold. When we present that to the photospectrophotometer, because all this white paper is going to bounce back, because it's just, this is going to have a higher L value. Oh, I wrote L. It's going to have a higher L value. Even though these are very, very bright, right? They're super, super bright. This right here is going to have more of that uh, the mica and the paper coming back, so it's going to have a higher L value. And I'll show you that next week. But our eyes would tell us that. Our eyes in the photospectrophotometer are, are sometimes different. Um, sometimes they're, they're, they're relatively close. <coughs> Okay, so let me show you underneath. These were the last ones we did. This is the interference gold. Look how bright that interference gold is. Hard to see over the white, like I just showed, but boy, it pops like there's no tomorrow over dark. It is brighter, from my perspective, than these other ones, which are absolutely bright. But this is much brighter. Look how bright that is. And that's an interference. And I think that's, you know, whether it's uh, um, Giovanni or if it's Claudia, I think that's what you learn to play with, with the luminescence. You learn how to um, uh, use the ones that are going to allow you to achieve your, your vision. Um, and you can also just play with them. So this was the last set. This right here has some, uh, some green particles, and that's from the, that is from the, Fuchsite that I was showing. I love those. So there we go. It's kind of neat how that black comes through too from the paper. It makes it look kind of very interesting. There we go. Here's the get these two. Those broken, those broken pieces would make lovely collages. Yes. The only thing about the the few shots are really pretty, um, but they break apart because the mica they break apart so easy. And this, so let me raise this all the way up, and I'll show you what we did today. 
So the mic really, the microphone behaved today, or it was me, um, and so we were able to get an extra, an extra five in today, and show the show them on white paper, which is very nice. And then the last one, I'll just kind of maybe I'll push this back here. those here and then do this there that's what we went over today there so those are 25 of the 48 colors So we only did a couple of interference, which means most of the interference will be next week. Um, Mickey, I'll go ahead and run those on the, I'll get the C-Lab and, and uh, I'll show you next week. But most definitely it's going to be, most definitely it's going to be the, the iridescent um, because it's going to, it's going to show, it's going to have the most white paper underneath it, which is really going to make that higher. They're, they're all super high. The L values on these are through the roof. Claudia, I will ask Tom. If you haven't been to the new website, I know that Catherine's been working on the website, I'm getting a lot of input from, from many of you um, as to what might what artists might want to see. So I think that is going to be it for today. Thank you for spending your um, part of your day with me or part of your night with me. I appreciate it. Uh, these are they're pretty. They're they're very interesting. Uh, somebody like um, Giovanni, um, Claudia, um, Jean Haynes. There's many artists that use them. I know they'd be open to your questions. I'll ask um, invite some. Um, so with that, thank you all very much. I, with you, I wish you all um, health um, and safety, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.